So one of the questions that I receive quite a bit is, what SDR do you recommend that I buy? Well, it's one of those things in amateur radio, it depends. It depends on a lot of things. Something like this little SDR unit, this little Nulek SDR, which you can get from Amazon, relatively cheap, under $40. This will do quite a lot of what you want to do at a budget price. However, if you compare this to something like this Web 888 SDR that's available from AliExpress, or even this RX888, these, all these SDRs are not all the same. There are some key differences. So I'm gonna quickly break it down before we look at some of these SDRs and the ones that I think are best value for money with five key points that you need to think about. The first thing to consider is frequency range. Now this Air Spy Mini that I've got here will cover down to 24 megahertz, but won't go any lower than that. So it's not much good to listen on HF with. However, something like the RX888 or even in some cases the NULEC might be suitable to be able to receive down to HF. So it all depends on what you want to receive. If you want to receive on HF, you need to be able to make sure that your SDR covers that range and more on that a little bit later on, especially with HF because it is a lot more difficult to find an SDR that can receive HF very well or alternatively VHF and above, a lot of these SDRs will do that. But also depending on how high in frequency you want to go, some SDRs can go up into the gigahertz range too. The next consideration is bandwidth. Now this little NULEC can do about three megahertz of bandwidth, so you can actually look on your SDR software of a slice of three megahertz wide, anywhere along the supported frequency range. You can have with some software multiple receive channels within that three megahertz, but still three megahertz can be a little bit limiting. Whereas something like this, you can jump all the way up to the RX888 and you can get up to 64 megahertz of bandwidth. So you can monitor the entire HF and six meter band all at once. Now software compatibility is another one that can be overlooked. Make sure that whatever SDR you're looking to purchase is compatible with the software that you most like or most enjoy to use. Perhaps you're actually starting off to learn more about SDR software and you're not quite sure what software you're supposed to use. Well, I did do a video on the one that I prefer to use, which is SDR console. And that link will be at the end of this video if you want to learn more about that. But the main thing is to just do a bit of a check, do some research and see to make sure that if you are getting an SDR dongle, that it will work with the software that you want it to work with. Now, the next thing is dynamic range. You wanna find an SDR which has a high dynamic range. Now, dynamic range is the SDR's ability to listen to both weak signals and strong signals simultaneously without distortion or signal loss. Now, if you have a high dynamic range, it means that the SDR can receive both a weak signal whilst perhaps a local strong signal is present at the same time. Now, that's especially important if you're in a crowded location, perhaps uh, during a contest, or you've got other nearby stations next to you that are very, very strong in frequency. You wanna be able to filter those out and get to those some of those weaker ones. Now, some of the SDRs like the RX888 or the Web888 are 16-bit ADC. And these have a higher dynamic range than something like this, a small little SDR dongle, cheap $40 dongle. And lastly is connectivity. So you need to decide how you're going to connect your SDR. In most cases, it's a USB. So these dongles are all USB compatible, as you can see, even the RX888 has a USB 3 connection on the back. But perhaps you want to put your SDR somewhere where you don't want uh, another PC or you want to be able to access it over the network or you want to remotely access it without running another PC, that's where something like the Web888 comes in or a similar type of SDR that has a network port on the back. Some of them can also uh, support Wi-Fi as well so that you can place this somewhere perhaps remote, you can log into it even over a web browser and you can access and listen via your SDR remotely, which is a great advantage, especially if you have an RF quiet location where you can run it. So now that we've looked at the features that we most need to be on the lookout for, let's have a look at some of the SDRs that I recommend you have a look at if you're looking for your first or maybe even your next SDR. And we're also gonna have a look too at a special antenna, which will receive in most cases pretty much everything that you want to, with some exceptions, of course. So let's have a look at the first SDR, and that is the NULEC, which I showed before. This is the RTL SDR version 5, 
uh, SDR dongle. This is only $37.95 uh, USD. You can also get this in other locations as well, which is great. They do ship worldwide on Amazon to the US, to Australia, and also to the UK. So this SDR has a receive frequency from 100 kilohertz right up to 1.75 gigahertz. So we mentioned about frequency range. This has got quite a wide frequency range. This also has a TCXO, so the oscillator inside it, which is reasonably stable at uh, 0.5 parts per million, which is good. And it is based off the popular RTL 28032U and R820T2 based radio. So there's some a little bit of information on some specs here. Uh, most of the RTL dongles, software that supports the RTL dongles, this dongle will support and will work with. Um, again, I've mentioned I've used SDR console, but you can look at SDR Sharp or HD SDR to use as well. Now, this is claims to be the best low po best performing low cost RTL SDR available anywhere. Some of you may have seen this SDR. This was the version three SDR RTL SDR dongle. Still a very good dongle if you can find one for cheap enough, but by the time you get this, which is reasonably old, even if you can get this anymore, I'm not even sure if you can or not, you may as well get one of these version fives. Not only that too, is the spacing that they put here is small enough so that it will fit multiple dongles next to uh, each other on a standard USB header port. You can see there, there's a Raspberry Pi with them next to each other, which is really good, whereas some of these wider ones wouldn't do that. So compared to that version 3 RTL SDR, HF signal to noise ratio is improved by up to 15 dB, which is a massive improvement. VHF and UHF signal to noise improved by 6 dB. Uh, tuning accuracy is improved by an average of four times and the frequency range is extended right down. If we have a look at our bandwidth, we get 3.2 megahertz of instantaneous bandwidth and HF reception below 25 megs is accomplished with direct sampling and requires a suitable antenna. So you will need a uh, antenna that is capable of receiving the HF bands that you want to listen to. Now there is a point here that I will make is that this dongle, I have just plugged it into my HF antenna before and it does receive and I have heard plenty of signals before on it. However, it is not as good as some of the other SDRs out there. So they do recommend here using an up converter to make HF a little bit better. So you can also purchase one of those two from Amazon and uh, that will make HF just a little bit more pleasing and a little bit better experience as they mentioned there because it does it does suffer a little bit on HF. And here is the Nulek Hammered Up uh, adapter that they recommend to use. This will make your RTL SDR dongle uh, work a lot better on HF. So a list of all the SDRs that I talk about in this video will be linked in the description below. Now, if you want the very, very top of the range HF SDR receiver, then it has to be this, the AirSpy HF Discovery uh, Plus. Sorry, AirSpy HF Plus Discovery. Now, this unit I don't have, but I know plenty of people and I've read a lot of reviews on this SDR, and this is the top of the line HF SDR receiver. This uh, is used by a number of hams I know on their remote SDR systems, and it works extremely well. And on the AirSpy website, there's lots of information about how they go about reducing the noise, um, increasing the signal, making it an uh, incredibly amazing piece of kit. And if we scroll down a little bit further on, one of the only disadvantages of this device is the fact that HF coverage is between 0.5 kilohertz and 31 megahertz, which is great. And VHF coverage is between 64 and 260 megahertz. Unfortunately, it does not cover six meters, which is one of the, one, uh, one of the reasons why I run an SDR here in my shack is so that I can listen to weak signals on six meters. So unfortunately it doesn't do that. So for my use case, I'd much uh, be better off using a different SDR for that purpose. Now we spoke earlier about dynamic range. The dynamic range is specified on this device. It is 110 dB blocking dynamic range on HF and 95 dB blocking range on VHF. 
Now, another Air Spy alternative is the Air Spy Mini, which I've used before, and that is what I showed earlier on in the video, which is right here. You can use this Air Spy in conjunction with the Spy Verter, which is an option to extend coverage down to HF, similar to that Ham It Up Nulec device that we showed earlier on, because just out of the box, the Air Spy Mini does not support down to HF, but it does do up to 1.7 gigahertz, which is pretty high, uh, you, plenty, of, plenty of signals between 24 and 1700 megahertz. And there isn't an awful lot above that to be able to listen to, especially if you're listening to just amateur bands as well. Now with the Air Spy Mini, I just had to plug it in because I forgot what the bandwidth is of this that is supported. It supports up to six megahertz of bandwidth spectrum that you can view using that dongle. Next up is the SDR Play series of SDRs. Now the RSP1A I have experimented with with great success and it is a great unit. The successor to that because you can't purchase the A model anymore is the B, the RSP1B. This allows you to, a 14-bit SDR, this allows you to go down to HF. Um, in, in fact, the RSP1B has improved performance down to HF and also in the six meter range. It allows 10 megahertz of bandwidth, uh, 10 megahertz of visible bandwidth, one kilohertz to two gigahertz, and is a USB plug and play device that you can use in with various different pieces of software. The SDR Play is a great um, little box that a lot of um, amateurs use and um, with great success. You can also get other SDRs from SDR Play such as the NRSP-ST. This is a new networked device which is a true plug and play networked receiver, which is very similar to the Web888, which I'm going to show very shortly. Spoiler alert, that's coming up. Uh, but this uh, is a great uh, box, which has just come out from SDR. So it's a little bit more expensive and stocks are low as well because it is a new product. You saw before the RX888, this uh, box is available off of AliExpress. In actual fact, at the time that I recorded this video, there were some deals and special discounts that were current at the moment on AliExpress. They may not last around, so make sure that you get it if you're interested in one of these. At the moment, I saw it for 163 USD, which is very, very cheap. This is the unit that can do uh, the full 10 kilohertz to 64 megahertz worth of spectrum because of the 16-bit ADC chip that's in it. Uh, via USB, it has a HF and a VHF port. It can cover 10 kilohertz up to 1.8 gigahertz. It has an LNA um, built into it. It has uh, a large heatsink on the back to stop it from overheating. There is a lot of stuff um, that is available with the RX888 that shows it to be one of the best receivers that you can have out there to multiple uh, receive multiple frequencies at once, such a wide bandwidth and also performance as well. Um, and actually at a pretty budget friendly price. The USB is USB 3. It does transfer quite a lot of data. If you are uh, running the full 64 megahertz of bandwidth especially, so you need to make sure that you have a PC which supports USB 3 super speed. And following on from that, the Web888, which I did a video on just the other day, and I'll link that at the end of this video. This is a user-friendly SDR that you can use in a browser. It is open source software, so you can actually flash new software onto it as it comes out, as they start to develop it. And you can basically just access this directly in a web browser. You can tune along, you can open this up to the outside world so others can also access that. There is 13 independent uh, channels, 13 waterfall channels that you can open up all at once. You can do FT8, FT4, digital, uh, whisper sk uh, skimming. You can do all sorts of things with this. Again, 16-bit ADC in this thing. And these are available also on AliExpress for a pretty reasonable price too. Again, more deals uh, that are available if you have a bit of a browse on Ali. But if you'd like to learn more about the Web888, then I recommend you go and check out my video at the end of this video. I have received some comments from people that have said, well, what antenna do I run with an SDR? Again, it depends. For the SDRs that you wanna receive HF on, then you wanna make sure that you have a decent HF antenna 
that is tuned around about the same frequency as what you're aiming for. So if you want to receive on, say, the 40 meter amateur band, you will need quite a large antenna for that to receive effectively. Or if you want to just receive maybe 20 meters or even 10 meters, 14 megahertz, 28 megahertz, then a smaller antenna may be a better compromise. At the end of the day, these are all receivers, so you could still use basically any antenna that you want but some antennas are gonna be much more effective than others. Now, if you're not interested in HF or you just wanna receive, say, common things such as airband, FM radio, VHF two-way radio or UHF two-way radio or emergency services radio, then this is probably the antenna which will suit the best. This is a discone antenna. This is a, a D3000N. It's a very spiky looking antenna, but the main advantage with this antenna is its wide band. It is 25 megahertz to three gigahertz. It is so wide band that this will be able to receive a lot of the frequencies that you want it to. And it is reasonably small. Um, on some uh, antennas as well, you can also use these to transmit on. There is a diamond disc cone as well, which is very similar design. I think a little bit more expensive, but I'll check that out and put an overlay over the screen of that here soon. You can transmit on that as well. So if you're an amateur radio operator, you're not putting up just an antenna just to receive on. You can also transmit on it if you need to as well. So that's uh, one of the recommendations that I make too. If you want to just be receiving between that frequency range which is quite large and it's not HF then this is the antenna which is probably going to suit the best for you. Let me know in the comments below what SDR hardware you recommend including the software that you're using. If you want to learn more about SDRs then I suggest that you subscribe to my channel because I've been doing a series of SDRs on using different pieces of equipment, how they all integrate with one another, the software reviews on different SDRs. So if you wanna learn more about those, then you'll get notified as those videos come out. Now I mentioned earlier that I did a playlist of SDR videos, they'll appear on the screen too, along with the review of the Web Triple Eight.